Hey guys, Akil here. If you frequent the podcast and you know that a common theme to success is productivity and efficiency, and that's exactly why I chose Spotify for podcasters. Not only can I schedule, edit, and monetize from a single place, but I can also record from my phone, you know, just in case one of those random ideas pops into my head and I got to get it out before I forget about it. Spotify for podcasters also helps me take the conversation to you guys, the fans, by allowing me to do video, share polls, and ask questions, which is, well, what keeps the show rolling? So if you're looking for the easiest way to streamline the podcasting process and maybe, you know, put a few extra bucks in your pocket at the end of each month, check out Spotify for podcasters. I use it. I love it. I recommend it. Hey guys, in today's episode, we're talking all about losses. How many losses to take before you stop? Is that something that you create in your own mind or is it something that should be technically based? Should you take actions like increasing your position size while you're losing in order to make up for it in the future? We're gonna discuss all that in today's episode of the Trading Coach Podcast, so listen up. First reach out to me and said, uh, Akil, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Do you think stopping for the day, right? Talking about trading, obviously. Do you think stopping for the day after two or three consecutive losses is a good idea in case the edge has diminished at that point in time? Now, I want to break this question up into two parts. We'll start with the first part. Do you think stopping after two or three consecutive losers is a good idea? What would you guys say to that if you were answering this question, mentoring this trader, coaching this fella up. Do you think you're trading? You get a couple losses in a row, two or three. Do you think you should say, hey, calling it, that's it, I'm done. George says, not unless, and or say, both say, not unless it is mentally messing with you. So by mentally messing with you, obviously we mean like, If you're so mentally destroyed, maybe something else was happening in your life and you're in a really fragile place and for some reason you're you're at a point where you're so mentally damaged that you find yourself wanting to do something dumb where it's like, I'm, you know, it's just, I don't know, maybe something's been building up for you for a long time and this is the final straw and you're just like in blood rage mode and you know you're gonna do something dumb in the market. Then I agree with you, then it's okay to call it quits. Or she says, well, what is the reason for stopping the trade? Precisely, and, and, and that is the main question, right? We we know what the reason is, Orsi. I think we know that answer, right? Fear, right? There is no other reason than fear. Now, we can we, we could disguise it by saying, oh, you know, the edge has diminished, but is that actually true? Has the edge diminished? What, what is, let, 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 let's go back to an edge, right? What is an edge, right? Do, is an, can we determine if we have an edge over two or three trades? If we backtest, and I, I had another question the other day where some guy backtested 15, 15 trades. He said, I backtested 15 trades and win percentage isn't to my liking. Does that mean the strategy is broken? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> no, no, too small. So if 15 is too small, certainly two or three is too small. So when we say stuff like, well, I'm going to stop trading because the edge is diminished. That is simply something that we are manufacturing, something that we are telling ourselves and a convenient excuse that we can use to get out of a situation that is painful. It is painful. It is scary. I want to get out of it. I'm going to use the excuse. The edge has diminished, right? We, we see this, this probably isn't a good example, this is a tough one. I, I see this in coaching sports all the time, not with my particular team because they're pretty honest, but um, you know, mental health has been something that has been more brought to the light throughout the years, um, especially recency, recently. And, 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 and as it should be, men, mental health is a, a, a massive thing that a lot of people suffer from. However, it's also something that can easily be used as an excuse, just like an injury. So one of the rules I have with the, the team I coach is that, hey, if you need a day, if you're having a, a rough day and we have a few people that are in some, some pretty dangerous spots, if you're having a rough day, right, and you just need a day off, take the day off, right? Tell me about it, obviously, but take the day off. And again, I, I have a good enough relationship with my team where people don't take advantage of it, but I'm sure there are people out there where it's like, 
I don't really feel like doing this today. Um, I'm going to use the mental, oh, mental health, mental health. I'm having a bad mental health day. And you can't say anything about it because how can you properly judge my mentally health, health, right? It's not like an injury where you can go to the trainers and the trainers are like, hey, you know, you're, you're fine. No injury there. You can't really diagnose mental health from the outside. So it's like it's an easy excuse. So it's the same thing with this edge where it's like, oh, the edge has diminished. So no, the edge hasn't diminished. So my answer in, in typical Akil fashion, uh, do you think stopping for the day after two or three consecutive losses is a good idea in case the edge has diminished at that point in time? My answer was no. And then it was how come? And I pretty much gave the same answer as you guys. I said, the goal of trading is to be consistent, right? Our edge is a probability that is in our favor. We all know that probabilities work out over the long term or, or show their true value over the long term, not the short term, right? Um, it's just like a personality, right? Someone can pretend you're in a new relationship. Someone can only pretend to be someone for so long, but eventually the real them will show, right? Your edge is the same way in the market, right? It can pretend for a little short term time period, but bigger picture, it's going to it's going to show its true self. We're dealing with the same thing with the DKC right now, where I updated you guys this week with the video that said, hey, the DKC, I'm down five point, I think like 6% for the year. I started trading in April. It's been one month. And I, I know there are people already, oh, well, Keel, you got to ditch it. You got to panic. You got to reevaluate it. You got to switch this. You got to switch that. It's been a month. It's been a month. A month is not nearly long enough a time to properly judge something. How do I know that? Well, because I've done my back testing, I have my results, and if I go back to my results, I see that I've had bad months. Yes, they have occurred. So I told this trader the goal of trading is to be consistent so that you can execute your edge by skipping trades. Are we properly executing our edge? If we're missing trades, are we properly executing our edge? No. We're not. Now we're self-sabotaging, right? And the response for him was that he said, I thought it would prevent larger losses if the trader has a high win rate, right? So we, we, we can take that statement as well. I thought it would prevent larger losses if a trader has a high win, win rate, right? So if a trader has a high win rate, they are likely to win more than they lose, correct? By the nature of having a high win rate, you are likely to win more than you are likely to lose. So therefore, if you have a few losses and you stop taking trades, there's a higher probability that you're missing wins than losses, right? Again, we can give the example. If I am a 70% a trader, that means on average, I win seven out of 10 trades. Now we know it's not actually gonna work like that, seven out of 10 trades, it's more like out of 100 trades, you'll probably get a more, you know, a more legit sample size. But let's, for simplicity purposes, let's say seven out of 10 trades, right? So if I took three, if, if I have 10 trades, if I have 10 trades and I'm gonna have seven wins and I'm gonna have three losses, right? So for you guys that are watching right here, these are my, my losses, these are my seven wins, I'm running out of room, boom, right? Seven wins, three losses. If I take, what the trader said, three losses in a row, boom, 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 right? Have I not eliminated my projected losses per my 10 trade sample size? I've got all my losses out the way. But now, I think my edge is ruined or at least that's what I tell myself. So now I'm gonna stop trading and I'm gonna stop trading when the percentages say that my next whatever many trades should be wins. And that's how the self-sabotage happens. Then the trader misses wins, then they get upset with missing wins and that causes a whole other type of issue. So there's no way that we can say that we're our edge has diminished. Like, why? Why? 
how has our edge diminished? Our, our edge should take into account the wins and the losses. Now, this made me think of another technique that traders use that I personally don't agree with called the Martingale strategy. I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago here in the, in the Q&A. Are you guys familiar with that? Welcome, King Charles, the Martingale, yeah? Where basically each time you lose, you trade a bigger position size. And the idea is that kind of similar to what I said, where it's like each time you lose, you are getting closer to your win. So therefore, if I double my position size or increase my position size, whatever, however you want to play it out, if I increase my position size or double my position size after each loss, eventually I'm going to hit those wins and I'm going to hit those wins with a big position size, that next win and that big position size, right? Tr tr risking more, rewarding more, I guess you can say, is going to make up for those losses I took. In, in theory, it sounds good, right? In theory, it sounds good. You keep doubling down as you lose, as you lose, as you lose, and you get that win and, and boom, you made up for it. In reality, what, what is the risk of, of doing so, of taking such approach? What is the downside of doubling down as the market is going down? George Norsey say, blowing your account. Yeah. What if you don't survive for that win, till that win? What if you don't survive to that win? What if you blow your account? What if you hit your margin call by the time you get to the point where that win comes? But now you're not around to see it. So it's 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 a risky approach. Now, there there are there are techniques and tactics where I can see it being used more of a, a micro scale, maybe not a big old, not maybe not a macro scale of of saying, hey, every time I take a loss, I do this. Maybe more in a micro sense where it's specific to a strategy where you know similar to we have the trend continuation, the graystone trend continuation strategy that we teach you guys, and it's like entry one or first strike, second strike, third strike. So maybe within an individual trading scenario, you allow yourself to do that where, hey, first strike entry, half position, second strike entry, full position, third strike entry, double position. And then after that, you're cut off, right? I can certainly see it within a scenario like that where it's very specific to the trading tactic, but not overall where you're saying just, hey, every time I lose, I, I double down. But at the end of the day, just like we spoke about with the, the losing your edge, if you know your numbers, and it always comes back to back testing, if you know your numbers, you have a good idea of if this scenario will work. So just going back to the, the edge thing a little bit, right? And I, I, I should have mentioned this to the trader, but I wasn't really too interested in the conversation because, again, he had his opinion already. And once I didn't confirm it, it didn't really make a difference. Um, but... Think about this, and I should have told the trader this. And I'll, one of his responses were this to when I said no. He said, I agree and disagree, as I think there are high benefits and disadvantages to limiting traders after losses. I guess the most important thing to realize when not is when not to trade. I guess for me personally, after a loss, it's a sign for me that I'm not in the zone to trade. But you're right, that a loss or two doesn't mean that the edge has diminished. I think stopping after X loss works for traders like me who might overtrade and revenge trade. Not sure what you think about that. So just to dive into that real quick, right? I think there are high benefits and disadvantages to limiting traders of losses. I guess the most important thing is to realize when not to trade. Now, I, I, I do think knowing when not to trade is important, but it shouldn't be based off emotions. And, I, and at the root of this issue, I think we can all agree is emotions, right? The root of this issue is all based on emotions. It is based off of, I lost two trades in a row, I'm scared, right? And the trader mentions like, hey, revenge trading and stuff like that. And, and that's true, you wanna, and that's the mindset we talked about earlier where if you feel yourself getting into revenge trade mode, that is, it, it, you, you could shut yourself down, yes. But 
you have to actually be honest about if you're in revenge. It is a, is a fine line between knowing that, hey, I'm going to revenge trade versus I'm just a little bit scared. Right? They're, 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 they're not right next to each other. You just don't go from being scared to revenge trading. There's a, a whole middle ground in there as well. But the, the main thing I would say is this, right? Going back to the, the testing, and I'm sorry for being all over the place, but you know this is how my brain works. You know, we should know our numbers, right? And if, if I'm in this trader's shoes, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my back testing chart and at, look, look at it and say, have I ever had two consecutive losses in a row? Because I want to see, is this normal, right? Is this normal? Because if we are going to say something like my edge is diminished, I'm going to look for abnormalities, abnormalities, right? Abnormalities, <laughs> abnormalities, right? I'm going to look for times or something that's happening in the market that hasn't actually happened in my testing. And that's what I do right now. So if I look at my back testing results and I see that there was a streak where I had 10 trades, 10 trades that lost in a row. And in real life, I'm at 20. That's a red flag, right? This is something does not connect. This is not the norm. 10 was expected. 20, something's wrong here. That's where I'm going to shut myself down and, and maybe kind of reevaluate the situation. But if I'm looking at my back test and I, and I see, hey, routinely, I've taken four or five losses in a row. Then in real life, I've taken a two or three trade losing streak. Isn't that to be expected? Isn't that to be expected? I would also then take a look at the results that happen after that losing streak. Because obviously I dug myself out of that hole. How do I know? Well, because I'm trading the system. If I didn't dig myself out of the hole, it wouldn't be a, a profitable system. I wouldn't be trading it live. So obviously I dug myself out of the hole. So I would also look at what came after that losing streak. If you can even call two or three trades a losing streak, that ain't, that ain't nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That ain't nothing. If you can't handle two or three losses in a row, oof, you, you picked the wrong industry. But you want to look at your historical results. That's what they're for. They're not just to tell you, hey, my thing works or my thing doesn't work, but they help provide confidence during the darkness. They help provide confidence during the darkness. So my final response was I think you have to do what's best for your personality because, again, I'm there was, there's no point in writing paragraphs. The, the trader has his answer already. Would you guys agree? He's made up his mind, right? Made up his mind. Now, if, it, if it's one of you guys, I will invest more energy in trying to convince you because I'm, I'm working with you. I'm working with you basically one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but if you've made up your mind, I, I've learned over time that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to change it if you have already know what you want your answer to be. So I, I will lend my opinion. I'll throw it out there. If you are intrigued by it and you want more information on my opinion, I will gladly give it to you. But if you're going to wipe it off and be like, ah, you know, no, I think this anyway, then yeah, that, that's cool. It, it doesn't, I don't lose sleep over it. Doesn't hurt my trading. I know that sounds harsh, but over the years, I, you know, when I started off teaching, I, I started investing all of my energy in every single person I would work with. And then what would happen is I would take everything personally. So when I would hear back from a trader that I spoke to like a week ago and they're doing the same dumb stuff, I'd look at myself like a kill, you're a failure. Like you had a chance to save these people and you couldn't do it. And that wears on you. And then you get older and you realize like, I can't save anyone. Even you guys on a platform, right? My job isn't to save you. And we always say this, right? When you guys become successful, it's not because of us. It's not because of me and Jason and OG. We don't, we don't make you successful. You make yourself successful. We're there to help and lend guidance, and that plays a role. But ultimately, we have zero say over your success or failure. Lawnmower on cue, right? <laughs> if you're going to fail, it's on you. If you're going to be successful, it's on you. He's, he's looking at me smirking again. He knows it's Monday Q&A time. He's looking at me. He knows. He knows. <laughs> you know what it was? We, we let the... Uh, we let the grass grow a little bit high, so he was pretty pissed off during the first cut because it was it got a little wild. So now, yeah, now now he's making up for it in, in his own way. But yeah, so that, that so that's that's interesting. But it made me dig into this topic of we talked about the martingale technique and how I'm not personally a fan of it. It's an old gambling technique, but it can be used in trading because gambling and risk management, money management, kind of similar. Um, but it also made me want to think about another technique 
called The Reverse Martingale. You guys ever heard of that? Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. This was actually a recording from one of our Monday private Q&A sessions. These are essentially our small group sessions where we really dig into some interesting topics about trading, some technical, some kind of psychological, some, well, like today, we were just talking about different approaches and whatnot. Now, the Q&A is only available to our premium members on the site, but if you want to get involved with us here at Tier 1 Trading, I recommend starting with the trial membership. It gets you 14 days on the platform. That way you can feel us out, feel our style for teaching, see how our style for trading looks like and our approaches, and then you can make the best decision to see if we're the right fit for you. So sign up today, www.tier1trading.com. Click that 14-day risk-free trial membership. No auto bill or anything sneaky like that. Just 14 days on the platform, then you get the boot.